Hola and welcome back to another video. Hey, this one's just going to be a quick video about typing accents because sooner or later you're going to be typing accents and special characters in Spanish. So we thought it would be great for you to have a, a video to walk you through the steps so you can see what you're doing in addition to just a checklist of stuff. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do if you're going to want to type these characters is go into your settings. A couple ways you could do this. You could either just go to the... Um, um, Windows icon, click that and you'll see settings, or you could just type the setting, uh, search for settings using your um, search feature, the, the search button down at the bottom. Okay, so once you're in your settings, uh, what you're going to want to do is look for, um, look for, look for time and language. Okay, here it is right here, time and language, it'll look something like this. Now, once you hit time and language, it'll take you to a screen that has uh, this stuff over on the left, and you will want to look again at language. So that last one, time and language, now you're in language. Click on that, and then you will see that you have, um, uh, you have English as a language that's pre-installed on your computer. When you click on English, it will expand it so that down at the bottom, um, underneath English, it will say options. Now on some of your computers, that little part will be at the bottom of the screen, so you gotta scroll up so you can see this whole thing where it says options. Once you click on the options button, it'll take you to add a keyboard. That's what we're gonna do here. Now there are a couple of keyboards you could add. You could do the Spanish keyboard, but that requires memorizing um, a keyboard that's different than ours, where there are different characters on each spot. So what we recommend you do is when you click add a keyboard, that you select the one that says United States International. United States International keyboard is the one that you're going to want to use. Now once you've selected that, you have, um, now you have two keyboards there, the US one and the International keyboard. Down by your system clock, down in the bottom right corner, uh, or system tray I should say, um, you'll see these two, this icon here now says English US or English INTL, that's the international keyboard. Um, so when you, when you toggle between them, it switches which keyboard you're using. Let me give you an example. If you're just using a regular English keyboard and you typed the apostrophe button, that would give you an apostrophe S, or you know, an apostrophe and then you could type an S. So the word that's, you would just type T-H-A-T apostrophe S and that's what shows up. On the international keyboard, when you type uh, the apostrophe button, nothing will appear on your screen until the computer knows what your next character is going to be. So if you press the apostrophe button and then the letter A, you'll get an accented A. If you hit the apostrophe button, nothing shows up. But then when you hit the letter E, now you'll have an accented E. Now if you want to do capital letters with accents, you just do the apostrophe button, shift E. You know, you just do the apostrophe button then whatever character you want. Now, if you want to um, uh, flip back and forth between the two keyboards, you could just click on it, or you can use, um, there are some keyboard sh shortcuts uh, that you could use, like the, um, the Alt-Shift, for example, will just toggle you between the two. Oh, and one more thing, you might have some special characters besides accented vowels. For example, you might want to do the Ñ. For that, you'll do the Alt button, um, the left Alt, and N, I'm sorry, the right alt, and N. And then you'll have the Ñ. You want the capital Ñ, you'll do the right alt, shift N. If you want an upside down question mark, instead of hitting the question mark, or you know, shift question mark, you'll hold down the right alt button, and then press the question mark key, and you'll get the upside down question mark. Same thing with exclamation mark. You just hold down the right alt, and then press the number one, and then you'll get the, um, the upside down question mark. Not the shift one, but just alt one. If you do alt shift one, then you'll get a superscript one. That's not what we're looking for. Oh, by the way, if some of you do use that umlaut, the diéresis, the two dots over the letter U, instead of using the apostrophe, you would use the quotation mark over the U. Um, sorry, it would be the quotation mark. Let go of the quotation mark, nothing will show up, but then when you hit the U, it'll show up with the two dots over it, and that goes for any vowel. Okay, so I hope that this has been helpful to you. 
Remember to uh, toggle between the two, otherwise your English teacher will say, why do you have all these two little dots over the vowels instead of an opening quotation mark? Um, that's probably the biggest handicap of when you, have the, uh, when you use the international keyboard. But yeah, you can toggle between the two, make it quick and easy, so that whenever we're doing tests or you're writing papers on your computer or paragraphs or sentences or whatever, you can easily include the accents because, of course, accents do matter. All right. If you have any questions, just let us know in the comments or in class. Ciao. Make it quick and easy so that whenever we're doing tests or you're writing papers on your computer or paragraphs or sentences or whatever, you can easily include the accents because, of course, accents do matter. All right. If you have any questions, just let us know in the comments or in class. Ciao.